I have the honor and privilege of welcoming you this afternoon to the Perkins School of Theology Public Life Personal Faith Luncheon, which is sponsored by the Bolin family and features Pulitzer Prize winning author and historian, Mr. Taylor Branch. We all owe a special debt of gratitude to the Bolin family for generously supporting during several years now, the Public Life Personal Faith Lecture Series. These yearly luncheons bring to campus outstanding leaders who have studied historical figures, who have been personally involved in various forms of public life and witness, and who have a deep and abiding personal faith. Pat and Jane Bolin have a vision for the importance of this topic and have been very special friends of Perkins School of Theology and Southern Methodist University. With Pat and Jane today is their son, Ross, and his close friend, Mary Catherine. Please join me in thanking them for being naming sponsors of this lunch. I also want to draw your attention to the generosity of the sponsors whose names are listed in the program, especially the presenting sponsors, the gold, silver, and bronze level table sponsors whose generosity has made this luncheon and our attendance possible. We're also glad to welcome United Methodist Bishop Max Whitfield, who is Bishop in Residence in Perkins School of Theology and who is the director of the Center for Religious Leadership at Perkins, the program within Perkins School of Theology for whose mission the proceeds of our luncheon will be dedicated. There are members of the Southern Methodist University Board of Trustees and of the Executive Board at Perkins School of Theology who are with us today. And along with them, I want to add a special word of appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Talmadge Boston, who has been the inspiration and the champion of this Public Life Personal Faith Luncheon since its inception. Talmadge will be introducing our speaker in just a few minutes. Please join me in expressing our gratitude to all of these persons for today. We are very happy to welcome into our midst for this luncheon students and staff from the Lincoln High School in the Dallas Independent School District. Lincoln Principal Chanel Howard Vesey is here with them. Their presence at this luncheon is made possible because of the generosity of Comerica Bank, represented by Mr. Irvin Ashford. Please join me in greeting these students from Lincoln High School. As you arrived today uh, here in this building, you may have passed the table with a Perkins School of Theology banner on it and seen some materials there on your way out of the building today. I hope you will stop by, pick up a copy of our Perspective magazine, and look at some of the other materials about the activities of our school, which is one of the academic units at Southern Methodist University. In just a few minutes, one of our outstanding graduates, the Reverend Dr. Michael Waters, founding pastor of Joy Tabernacle African Methodist Episcopal Church will be leading us in our invocation. But before Dr. Waters leads us in prayer, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the 10th president of Southern Methodist University, Dr. R. Gerald Turner. Thank you. And I join the dean in welcoming all of you to campus. And uh, it's a beautiful day on the campus. And we've got a big recruiting weekend uh, on deck, and so it's nice to have good weather when you've got people coming from all over the country thinking about uh, coming to SMU. And particularly in February, you want all of those from the north to be down here <coughs> and see what uh, this day's like. And so for all the Lincoln students, we're delighted to have you with us and uh, hope that uh, you can project yourself here as a student at SMU if you're senior next fall or we'll wait to whenever you graduate, but uh, welcome to campus. This is a, a great occasion, and we're delighted to have Taylor Branch with us. Uh, 
the colloquium he had this morning I know went well, and uh, we're all looking forward to hearing him uh, after our meal. But as all of you know, he's one of the world's foremost authorities of, in our, on our country, the history of our country, and particularly the history of Dr. Martin Luther King. And I also, at this occasion, since uh, the Bolin event is one of the highlights of the semester, and really for the year, for the Perkins School of Theology, I'd like to say a few words about Bill Lawrence. I think most of you know that he told me last fall, or last summer, that he would be uh, retiring from the dean's position at the end of this year. He's been dean of Perkins School of Theology for 14 years. He's a pastor, a professor, an academic administrator, and uh, a leader within the United Methodist Church and even beyond those boundaries. During his tenure, and we just finished the centennial campaign, if some of you wanted to participate but didn't, you can give me a post-dated check <laughs> and we'll still count it. But uh, nevertheless, I know many of you did. And uh, during that campaign, of course, we uh, built the new Prothrow Hall and renovated Kirby and Selectman during that time, and also added scholarships and professorships and other kinds of important additions to the School of Theology. But the uh, School of Theology was one of the three core areas when the university was founded and when it opened in 1915. And, and when we celebrated that on September the 24th, we thought, what better way to begin it than to open the day uh, with a service at the Perkins Chapel? And so we asked Bill if he would give the sermon, sort of initiating our 100th anniversary celebration, and he did a great one, and I'm sure it's online. If you didn't see it, it's worth looking up. But joining me in this recognition of Bill is uh, the Reverend Catherine Glaze Lyle, who is representing the Perkins Executive Board in this commendation of Bill. Reverend Lyle. You short people in the audience will understand. I have to adjust the microphone. Thanks so much, Dr. Turner. And on behalf of the executive board and so many friends of Perkins, I want to thank Bill Lawrence. Where, where is Bill? There he is. OK. Um, I want to thank Bill and his wife, Naomi, for the amazingly powerful leadership that he has exercised for the last 14 years at Perkins. I am a proud graduate of Perkins. And so as a graduate and a member of the executive board, it's been a real joy to see firsthand the kind of leadership he has exercised, the care he has given the school that I love. And we are all incredibly grateful. Bill has brought together an amazing array of faculty members who teach and minister in a wide variety of programs that more and more reflect this increasingly global world in which we live. Bill has led the faculty in the difficult work of creating new degree programs, and I will just say parenthetically, there is one for you. Whether you want to be in professional ministry or you just want to deepen your understanding of the world and God's interactions with the world, there is a place for you. And he has also done with the faculty the difficult work of restructuring existing programs. One of the things that I love the best about Bill is that he loves the church. Not just the United Methodist Church, but the whole tree of faith. And he has been a significant voice in interfaith dialogue, as well as a voice of reasoned Wesleyan theology in Dallas. And he has not had a whole lot of company in that regard. He has spoken and written on important issues of faith and conscience. Now, as President Turner said, the campus buildings have been transformed during his time at the helm. I've thought back on that, and um, we've had a lot of other people try. Bill got it done. And that's important, but even more important is the fact that literally thousands of women and men 
have, through Perkins Classrooms and Programs, been exposed to the mission of Perkins School of Theology, which is to prepare women and men for faithful leadership in Christian ministry. Bill Lawrence is at heart not only a churchman, he is a historian. And he has brought his long perspective to the school, a perspective that looks to the past but also looks out into the future. And that is one of the great gifts that he leaves with us. So Bill, on behalf of the executive board, uh, for myself and for all your friends, I thank you for your service to Perkins School of Theology at SMU. We will not easily replace you and we will never forget you. Thank you. Perkins does have a wide variety of programs and courses of study for many different types of students. We have a highly competitive program, PhD program in religious studies, a doctor of ministry degree. I have a candidate for the doctor of ministry degree at my table right now. Um, our gold standard master of divinity program and a lot of other master's programs Perkins, through these programs, meets the needs of the church and the academy. I want to invite you to look at the screens for a brief video presentation, and then after the video, we will have our invocation by Dr. Waters. When it comes to developing leaders for the church and the world in the 21st century, Perkins School of Theology is on a mission. We are clearly and without hesitation committed to the mission of preparing women and men for faithful leadership in Christian ministry. And uh, for the most part, what happens in 19th century, late 19th century Methodism? We're absolutely comprehensive in our training. The academic work is crucial, but we're equally interested in spiritual formation, and that's intimately related to knowing God and the truth about God. And we are really serious about how you practice ministry. The time that I've been able to spend with my professors in their office hours, those conversations and those experiences, the dialogues that have taken place in the office hours have been huge in shaping the, the course of study that I've taken here at Perkins and even my plans after Perkins. We also have many opportunities for spiritual formation and community formation here, um, whether it's through chapel or through organized interest groups, through uh, our new monastic houses where some students live in intentional community, through opportunities to serve in local mission. The internship course uh, is a requirement. It's a course that prepares persons for ministry. We place students in real life settings, be it a church, agency, or a hospital setting. Uh, they have an opportunity to uh, practice ministry, so to speak, uh, under competent supervision. Spread my wings and fly, fly. Music, I think, can play a very careful uh, and important role in bringing the past into the present and the future into the present. When we, for example, sing a Martin Luther hymn, we pull the witness of those Christians into our worship now. When we sing a hymn from Africa, we perhaps are looking to the future. What is it gonna be like when we gather around the throne? What's relevant becomes a dynamic a connection between our heritage and our hope. Bridwell Library is one of the best theological libraries in the United States. If I need anything uh, in terms of either um, papers that are in 
very highly selective journals, or I need the basic tools, it's all there. Case in Point is a UM History project that I'm working on this semester. I had no idea that exactly what I needed about to find out about a missionary to Brazil 150 years ago was going to be sitting right at, at my doorstep. People that wait for the church to come together and say, what, where is all this going? It's here. This is where it's going. Its diversity is part of what the 21st century church is about. And really, at the end of the day, everybody needs Jesus. And so I think it's great to go to a place where you can experience all of this and where you can really see how that's impacted and how that's viewed in all sorts of different variation right in your own backyard. But that's what we're studying here at Perkins. We're, we're studying about God in real ministry. His task, his job is to spread the gospel to every person that we are going to find in our path during our life. I would be so ill-equipped to be in a pastoral role in a church without a formal theological education. And I thank God that I got mine at Perkins. At Perkins School of Theology, we cannot presume to know what questions or crises the leaders in Christian ministry will have to face in the future. But we know that to be a Christian leader in the future will require theological education at the highest levels of academic learning, the deepest levels of spiritual experience, and the finest respect for what effective ministry can accomplish. And that is what we offer at Perkins School of Theology. Higher learning and real experience to prepare leaders for vital ministry. Let us pray. Eternal God of mercy and of light, how we laud and magnify your most holy name. Amid this August assembly, our present praises of thanksgiving for your grace and generosity gifted to each generation. We now assemble to give reflection to your palatable presence among your people during the days of the greatest movement for justice known upon these shores. We painfully acknowledge that we have come over a way which by tears has been watered. Yes, we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. When police dogs fastened their teeth into our flesh, you were present with us. When water from fire hoses was unleashed with, unleashed with such force that it ripped the bark from trees, you were present with us. When bombs bursting in church basements snatched the lives of four little girls, and when barrels aimed at a balcony failed a king, you were present with us. When trampled under the hooves of horses upon a Selma bridge, you were present with us. Yes, even in the midst of our present struggle to ensure that all lives matter and that black lives matter, as we thirst for justice in Sanford and in Ferguson and in Cleveland and in Waller County, and in Charleston, and in Flint, and yes, even in South Dallas, you are present with us. You remain our help in ages past, and indeed you are our hope for years to come. For we know that nothing shall separate us from your loving presence. Bless our food. Bless our fellowship and bless our learning. In Jesus' name, amen.